Off our streets, no justice, no peace. Nazi scum, off our streets, no UNF students marched and made their voices heard outside the suspension appeal hearing for student and self-proclaimed Nazi Ken Parker. Hopefully the administration decides to stand with students and expel him. We first showed you this photo last week. It sparked anger across campus. An allegedly threatening message included in the post is what prompted Parker's suspension. Monique Williamson tells me he's threatened her and the group Students for a Democratic Society before. He has been doing so since 2016. He's known in the activist community for threatening folks, for threatening anybody that decides to dissent and stand against white supremacy. Sky Action News Jack shows you members of the National Socialist Movement that turned out to support Parker. In the post, do you think it was a threat to students on this campus? No, I don't think it was a threat to the students. As a matter of fact, I know it wasn't. Supporters say Parker has been threatened before, and right now he's being bullied. You can't just go around kicking people out of school because of how they believe. It's not right and it's un-American. We are suited up, we're wearing our x-ray protective gear, and we're going to be going in the OR to be able to give you a close-up look of a new procedure that allows doctors to close up incisions. Tapping away at the bone. Doctors are surgically repairing this patient's ankle. No cartilage. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's just rubbing bone on bone. Exactly. And so what we do is we actually have this little guide, and this, this helps us to place the implant. It's almost a custom implant. A 3D print guides Dr. Jason Perino as he places pins and rebuilds the ankle. We're at this step right now, making the cuts in the bone. After three hours of surgery, Dr. Perino closes the incision using something called a zip line. This causes no damage to the skin. This adhesive device holds the edges of the incision together as the doctor tightens the straps. This is the perfect kind of combination of a staple, uh, the speed of a staple without the trauma of a staple um, and the closure of a suture without, you know, the time that it takes to suture. These are pictures of patients who have used the zip line. You'll be able to move that. It'll keep tension on the skin so it doesn't open. Most say there's less pain and a faster recovery. Once the incision is closed, doctors say they'll cut close to the strap near the locking device. Reporting at UF Health Jacks, Caitlin Chana, CBS 47, Action News Jacks. Neighbors tell us that this is the apartment where Henry Martinez lived. If you take a look at the door, you can actually see the evidence marker in the doorway. And if you pan down, you can see what appear to be bullet holes surrounded by blood spatter in the doorway where the 28 year old was shot and killed. You go to bed thinking everything's right in your world and you wake up and everything's upside down. Norma Sarver says she heard the shots that killed her neighbor, Henry Martinez. It was just sound bang, bam, bam, bam. Sarver tells me this is the 28-year-old father. JSO says Martinez was shot multiple times in his doorway while his girlfriend was inside. He was so loving and so caring with that baby. That was his whole life. Corey Hayes says the same thing. One of my good friends, he got took away from his family. Hayes tells me he was on the phone with Martinez just minutes before the shooting while Martinez was in line for fast food. We found this Wendy's bag still sitting on the front porch. Hopefully they find out who did it and, you know, just to be brought to the person, like our people, whoever has something to do with it. We saw this white car with evidence markers being towed from the apartment. Investigators say no gun was recovered from the scene and they're questioning Martinez's girl. Friend. I'm sorry I didn't get up and look and see what was going on. Maybe I could have seen who did this. As investigators search for the gunman, neighbors tell us that they're making changes. All of that story coming up for you on Action News Jax at 5. On the west side, Beth Russo, CBS 47 Action News Jax. Crews hard at work Thursday clearing debris from ditches and storm drains near Betty Wolf Park in Mandarin. This is the time to prepare. Even Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry picked up a shovel and got his hands dirty. There will be water flow issues, but we're doing everything that we can to ensure that the recovery piece happens, happens as quickly as possible. Robert Stevenson says he was relieved to see them in his neighborhood. It has flooded enough to flood all the homes on that side of the street. The city's acting very proactively instead of waiting till, oh, we should have cleaned those drains out. As the city braces for Irma's potential impact, the mayor is pushing for continued preparedness. He says if the storm does not change course, we could be seeing a mandatory evacuation order sometime tomorrow. We're prepared. We will get through this as a community, as neighbors, as brothers, sisters, and friends.
This mural in downtown Palanca shares the story of Billy Graham, especially where his legacy began. This church just down the road from here. God loves the world. Billy Graham is known for spreading the gospel in front of thousands and packed venues around the world. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has an answer to every problem that you face. But here at Penile Baptist Church in Palatka is where a teenage Graham gave his first sermon. One day a young 19, I think 19 year old boy, came right here and stood with uh, parishioners here. Probably had no clue who it would be. Matter of fact, I think somebody said uh, it was okay, but he won't make much of a preacher. <laughs> I think he was wrong. I think he was wrong. Pastor Benny Reynolds showed me around this small white church that launched a legacy for a young college student. This is where uh, it all began, 1938, and just about a half a mile or so from here is the lake, Silver Lake, where he was baptized. Reynolds has preached here for 15 years and tells me Graham eventually held his first revival in our area too, up the road at Boswick Baptist Church. Reynolds says this aging sanctuary is now replaced with a new building, but the memories and photos of Graham are irreplaceable. Right here is a picture of he, uh, Billy Graham and Cecil Underwood. That's the pastor of the church here at the time that brought him to come here and preach. Now, 80 years later, on the day Billy Graham passed away at 99 years old, this pulpit and these pictures show the evangelist's signature message first echoed. America won't be the same, the world won't be the same without him. Pastor Benny tells me they will be talking about the Graham legacy during services tonight. Reporting in Palatka, Cole Heath, CBS 47 Action News, Jax. It's really scary. Kara Dixon says seeing this CVS on County Road 210 in St. Johns County taped off and surrounded by deputies is alarming. She works right next door and lives not far away. It can happen anytime. I'm afraid that my family could get hurt. I'm afraid that I'm, I could get hurt. Action News Jax obtained this surveillance footage from the same CVS when it was robbed in May 2016. Deputies say this morning a suspect driving this black pickup truck passed a note to the cashier demanding money, then fled with the cash. It's a wonderful place to live and uh, crime has not been an issue. But it was an issue this morning. Hours before the robbery at CVS, I was at the scene of another robbery just miles away. Deputies say one suspect entered this speedway on State Road 13 holding a hammer while another waited outside. They took off with an undisclosed amount of cash. Surprised at the rapidity with, with the fact that you would have two right here. The sheriff's office isn't sure if the two are connected, but they believe the CVS robbery suspect acted alone. Either way, neighbors are upset. Really concerning. This humpback whale that washed ashore has neighbors flocking to Fernandina Beach. I've never seen a humpback in this area. It is kind of kind of sad. Action News Jax told you Sunday when the whale was discovered. Now neighbors want to know what caused the 30 foot male juvenile whale to wash up here. I'm really curious because like like they said they like the sharks had attacked it, but they think that's after it had died. So just curious like what's going on. The research team tells me that's what they're working to figure out. The scientists are doing a full internal and external evaluation, looking for signs of entanglement, ship strikes, and disease. We'll take blood samples, um, liver, kidney, anything that would show any kind of toxins. Uh, we'll be taking some blubber samples, basically all of the internal organs. The team says humpback whales have been dying in unusually high numbers along the East Coast, so they're taking every detail into account. Many of them have been caused by ship strikes and some of them have been undetermined. So we're going to be looking very closely to make sure this animal uh, may or may not have been the same cause of death. 